Okay, so here we are. New HB Racing E819 RS wheel. This is going to be a series. I'm going to do each step along the way and put it in a playlist so you can watch it from front to back. And so I'm going to switch this camera around to a POV view and we're going to get this box open and see where we're going to start. Okay, so here's my first screw up using the GoPro. I had it on time lapse. Couldn't see what was going on in my head. I hadn't quite figured that out. So really, all I'm doing here is showing off my case knife that I'm using to unbox it and opening my parts and saying that I'm digging out the five hole pistons to drill them out to 1.5 front and 1.6 rear. So we'll do that and here we go. Alright, so let's dig out two more. There's a five hole. And there's a five hole. That's pretty quick. So the rest of them just putting out of the way. Okay, so as far as drilling these goes, these you get these drill kits. I borrowed this one from a friend of mine. John the Voice Jennings. Um, I, I can't even figure out how to open them. There we go. Problem is with these is they're not exactly what they say they are. So I always measure them, try to be as precise as I can. So Technically, the 1.6 is 1.5, so that'll be our front. And if I remember right, the 1.7 is as close as we're going to get to 1.6, so that's what I use. And I forgot the tool that you put these in, but I'm going to try to do it without it, I guess. So I'm going to try to separate them front and rear. This is pretty simple. Just do it by hand. There's a tool that just... It comes with you put these in and I left it at the track in John's trailer so no big deal you can do it by hand Okay, so you drill those that way, and then I like to take a body reaming tool and just clean off, clean off any burrs real easy. Don't want to change the shape of it. I'll run it back through there and then little pieces in there it kind of cleans it out wouldn't hurt to take a, a air blower and blow them out got any little pieces you can pick it out with a razor knife Anyway, I won't bore you with that. I will get the rest of these done and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I got the pistons drilled. Now we'll go on to the next step. The next step is uh, I'll get my shock shafts out. I'm gonna polish them. So I'll just get that and open up all the parts and make sure you keep all the parts together. You see I'm, here I've marked my pistons 1.5 and 1.6 so front and rear so i don't get them mixed up and actually i just opened the rear part so i'm gonna slide them over here and now i'm gonna open the front i 
Okay, so what I'm doing next is polishing the shock shafts. Got to get a few things out here. Got to get my Dremel. I think the shock shafts will fit this collet. So I'll chuck it up on the piston end. Turn the speed down a little bit and see what see if it holds on. Okay. Okay, so I use semi-chrome polish, which is something that's used in the knife world for polishing knives. Works incredible. Just put a touch on there, slow it down all the way. Do it with your fingers. You'll see it turn black. And that's when it's doing its magic. Okay comes off on your hands obviously get me another towel I'll turn the speed up a little bit and just polish it on out be careful it gets pretty hot That's pretty much it for. Ooh, it's hot. Pretty much it for polishing the shock shafts. Makes it nice and smooth. You can kind of see the difference. Not sure if you can see in this video or not, but it's definitely smoother. Going to make it smoother. So I'm going to finish polishing the rest of these, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so my next step is going to be installing the piston onto the shaft. So you take your shaft, the washer goes first, then the piston goes on with the countersunk part on top. So it's flat on the bottom, there's a countersunk sunk part on top, that's where the nut goes. Put that on there. Put the nut on, it's kind of tiny, hard to do with fat fingers. Okay, then we put it, you put it in your awesome HB Racing shock tool, by the way. Clamp it in there, get your nut driver. And you don't snug these down super tight. Get, get it to where it's tight, where you feel it, then back it off until you can barely twist it. That way it keeps it from getting in a bind you don't want to bow it out or warp it or anything like that. So we'll just repeat that process on the other front shock. too loose so turn it back up just a little so i just like to be able, barely be able to spin it it's a locking nut so it's not going to come off then we got to do our rears
Okay, so there you have your shock shafts and pistons prepped and ready to go. Uh, next, we need um, need the shock bodies. This would be our rear. And here's our fronts. Okay, so I, we don't need these collars just yet. I'm gonna put those out of the way. We'll come do that after the shock's built. You know, of course, check inside your shock body. Make sure there's nothing funny, burrs or machining material or anything like that. If we don't need caps yet either. These are our cap bleeder screws. We don't need those for a while. I'd move this stuff out of the way so I don't lose it. Okay, so next, the way I do this is I go ahead and put the, the rod and piston, the shaft and piston in the body. I don't need these shocking balls yet either. I don't know why they put it in this package. Okay, so next we're going to put the O-rings in. Um, get your grease. I use this grease is simply Valvoline. I think they call it import grease. Go ahead. And don't be scared to use a good bit. Just go ahead and put some on your o-rings and then can't get it off your finger probably best to do it this way go ahead and just spread it on we're gonna put a little more later so you don't have to be go crazy with it yet I just like to get them coated somewhat you'll see what I'm doing here in just a minute Okay, so now they stick to everything. Okay, so then next, go ahead and put one O ring on the pist on the shaft, spacer, another O ring. Okay, then go ahead and put more grease on it kind of like a pack in it so squeeze them together and spin it around now it's ready to go in the body so we'll repeat this process Now you don't have to do it this way. A lot of people put the O-rings and parts up up in the body first. I like doing it this way because you know you don't 
the threads aren't scuffing the o-rings when you send them through I just think it's kind of a neat way to do it okay so next we we'll go ahead and slide them up in your shock body and put your next piece in next spacer Okay, so we've got to have a o-rings to go in here I don't know why they don't package it with this I get it I guess rubber pieces it's not in there I think it's in here slide this stuff actually there's two different there's a front and rear package I guess So this is the ring we're after. Well, we got one hiding somewhere. There he is. Okay, so I like the all these o-rings put a little bit of grease on them they don't need to go in it any o-ring really shouldn't go in dry they don't need a lot just a little bit okay so this this slides over the shock body where your cap's gonna go Okay, so next, the cap slides over, screws on. Now snug these down here in just a minute. Yeah, make sure to look that the uh, spacer is seated correctly. Okay, so to tighten these down, they don't have to be super snug, but I take two tools to do it. Go ahead and take my tool to hold the shock body, tighten it down with another pair of shock pliers. Doesn't have to be super tight. And just snug them down.
Okay, so make sure there's no kind of binding or anything. Don't do them dry too much, you know. Just make sure everything's kosher. Not no binding up or anything. And that's pretty much the part for putting the shock body. Next, we'll get the oil out and we'll start oiling them up and go through that process. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, so next up, we're going to go ahead and put some fluid in the shock and let the air be leak, bleeding out of that. So for shock fluid, I use 60 front and 40 rear almost all the time. So let's go ahead and get this process started. Go ahead and fill the fronts. I use the XTR fluid. You can get that from Absolute Hobbies. Okay, so I fill it almost all the way to the top and go ahead and pump the shock some, all the air bubbles so the air bubbles can come up. Try to do that to get all the air through the piston and working its way out of the shock. And then you set them aside. My trailer, I've got these neat little holders right here. It's a tool holder, but the shock fits perfect. So I'll do that. I'll fill it up. Same thing. Look close to the top. We'll come back and add a little more later. You can, I don't know if you can see that. You can see the bubbles working their way through the piston. Go ahead and let it, that's it. Let's move on to the rears. Super smooth shocks. Feel great. Okay, so we're going to let those simmer. You know what? While we're letting those simmer, we could go ahead and be working on these shock collars. Get our grease back out, put a little grease on each O-ring. This kind of conditions the O-ring and it makes the assembly much easier. Okay, so these, get this O-ring in the collar, just tightens it up on the shock body. Make sure that's seated good. Don't worry about getting grease and stuff on things and oil on the shock because when we get done, we'll simple green the shock. Once it's assembled, we'll simple green it and clean it up. I guess we can go ahead and do this prep work. While we're at it, we set our bladders out of the way. Take our shock ends. Put them in. If you see, there's a shiny side and a dull side on all these shock ends. Same thing on the end links and everything. Always put it through the shiny side. It's a little, goes in a little easier, doesn't warp the piece as much. Use my handy HP tool again. Just snap it in place. 
Again through the shiny side. Okay, so another thing we do is prep the shock boots. The shock boots uh, are pretty sealed when they're on there, so it needs a little bit of vent. Otherwise, it kind of sucks to it. Doesn't let moisture get out and stuff. So I'll take the my handy dandy HB tool, punch a hole in it like a tire punching hole. Might be easier to go this way. Go about halfway down the the boot didn't get in there good Anyway, there's your little vent hole. That's for moisture. If, a lot of times you'll see people have the shock shafts like rusted or corroded up. The main reason I see that is because they, they wash it down or something or there's moisture gets in there and they don't have a way to vent out. Also, it will suck and carry the vacuum and suck to the, to the shock, make it not act right too. So, real simple tip. Really makes a difference. There's that. Okay, we're gonna let these shocks, the fluids simmer down a little bit and we'll be right back with you. Okay, so now we're gonna get to bleeding the shocks. In my e-buggy, I like to run the stock bladder. So I'm gonna build one with a shock bladder, show you how I build that. And then I'm gonna build the last one emulsion style, which is how I usually run it in my Nitro buggy, if I get on a real bumpy track with the e-buggy, I might change it to emulsion. So I'm gonna build it both ways and we'll show you how that goes. Okay, so take my shock, fill it. Go ahead and push the shaft up most of the way. Top it off just pretty much to the top. Now take my bladder, put it in the top and you're gonna spill some fluid. Don't worry about it. That's, that's part of the bleeding process. So. Push it down with your pinky, move it up till you feel it, and then make sure it's seated good. Put your cap on very carefully. Try not to get it twisted in there. We're gonna screw it on down. Got a lot of oil, so we'll wipe that off. Go ahead and snug it down by hand tight. And then we're going to see how that feels. Now, I hadn't put the shock bleeder in yet. See, it's pretty much dead. Real simple process. A lot of people struggle with that. And I, I put the, ble the bleeder screw in last. I don't, don't know why. That's just the way I'd like to do it. Go ahead and snug it down. And there you have pretty much dead bladder shock. That's how I always run an e-buggy. I love it. Um, for whatever reason, I seem to like the bladder in most situations on e-buggy and emulsion on the nitro buggy. So, okay, let's 
let's move on to emulsion. Got one sh I've one rear shock left. Go ahead and top it off all the way to the top. So I'll set that back down. I'll take my cap, I like to put a little bit of oil on the O-ring. These are the O-rings, the HB emulsion style O-rings. Go ahead and get it seated in the little slot. And screw it on your shock. This one I go ahead and snug it down. I use a Losi tool that I had left over from some old kits back in the day. I can get it snug. It doesn't have to be super tight, just snug. You go ahead and get your bleeder on your tool. Bleeder screw that is, actually. For whatever reason, these are supposed to be 1.5, but they're a little loose in there and it's easy to strip them out. So I use 1 16th. Seems to fit it better. I think it's actually standard. So you go ahead, push the shaft up with your pinky, wipe the fluid off. Always get that towel on there. Okay, so I take my bleeder screw while it's all the way in. Tighten her up. Snug it down. Give it one more good wipe. Then we'll pump it 20 times. Pull it all the way out. That's going to build some pressure in there. We're going to let it off. I like to try to keep this screw on the tool for putting it back in right when I get done. So then you bleed it one more time. You see that fluid pushes out one more time with some air in it. Tighten your screw down. And there you have it. emulsion if you don't like it you know feel it you know, according to how dead you want it you want to if you have to bleed it again you can if it's got a little too much rebound and there you have it there's how you bleed the shocks emulsion and bladder style so i'm gonna get all those wrapped up cleaned up i'm gonna take them outside spray them with simple green wash them off and then air them dry and then we'll get back to assembling the rest. I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we're down to pretty much the final steps. Um, I got a front and a rear shock. I'm gonna just show you these two. You just slide your collar over there, press and thread it on. It's got that O-ring on it to hold it tight. So make sure you're not cross-threading it. Go ahead and thread it on up about halfway up the threads. Okay, so next we have our boot. Wouldn't hurt to put a little bit if you got a little leftover grease or something on the, or oil on there to help it slide on a little easier. So you take your long one for the rear, of course. We'll go ahead and put our ends on. Okay, so on the rear, you see it's got a, a line grooved, grooved in it. You take your long end, screw it up to that where it stops on that line. There 
we go. And then on the rear, sometimes there's hard to get started. I'll give the take my body boring tool and just chamfer that edge to get it started. You can't do that on you can do that on the fronts because they don't have any recess in it, but the rears have a recess in it where it doesn't really that doesn't really help you a whole lot because you can't get the tool down in there. So on these, I've got to put the boot on. On these, they don't have the line to screw it up to. I don't really measure where I put these, but I do screw it up. To, um, I just do it where I can see maybe one, one thread left. Maybe two. Something like that, yep. So then you like to feel them. Make sure the boot's traveling there right. But you can see the the boot doesn't like suck up to it. It leaves plenty of room for that to vent out. Okay, so next, I'll take these. We get our springs. On the springs, on both Nitro Buggy and E-Buggy, these blue rear and yellow front, that's... A lot of people use that same setup and I'm having to reuse kit comes with gold I'm having to reuse some yellow springs because that's all I've got okay so you just slide your spring up in there then the then the collar goes on I guess you call it collar I'm not sure and I that feels super smooth I like to set mine up with the vent facing outward uh if it leaks any out of the bleeder or something it doesn't tend to leak down on the car um i have had times where i left it loose and made a mess uh this it's still gonna make a mess but that's just why i do it that way and i always put the slot in this piece out it just seems to not come loose as easy uh never have problems with them coming loose so and then from there your little bushing snaps in the top in the direction you're going to do it. And there's a built front shock. Rear. Same process. That would be, this would be the left side. And then snap the bushing in. super super good smooth shocks one of the best parts about an hb car there's your front and rear and there you have it um okay so there's shock building that's step one in the build process of my new e-buggy so we got super smooth shocks love the way these feel love building a new kit it's always fun so i hope you enjoyed this i hope it helps you out if you have any questions feel feel free to ask and make sure you subscribe to the channel for more uh hit that notification bell to get upcoming videos next up if i'm not mistaken will be diff building so we're gonna wrap these up set these aside and i'll get started on the diff building as soon as i can and we'll get back with you i hope you enjoyed it See ya.